it's just so much fun. I've run a bit of coverage on LG this year. I mean, who else was going to do it? And then bam, right in the home stretch, they drop this bad boy and it's just so much fun. Standard cranky soapbox rant. YouTube SEO trains reviewers to focus on the most popular search topics. Smaller brands get less views, so they get less coverage. And it's likely that many consumers miss out on products which might be perfect fits for their actual individual needs. <gasps> Whew. But let's get back to the phone. I think LG's onto something here. We can make a solid phone that can be a regular phone and pair it with a cool accessory to enhance multitasking. I've been really critical of folding tablets which turn into fragile, clumsy phones. No such compromises here. I'd say my use is about 70-30, regular phone to dual screen, either with the case completely removed or with the screen folded behind. Now, most of our interactions are built around a traditional bar form factor, not an awkward square tablet shape. As a phone, LG has done a terrific job of straddling their standard premium phone strategy and moving it closer to something we might see from a OnePlus. I have a whole separate comparison between the G8X and the regular G8. Now, I still think the regular G8 is the better standalone phone. The higher resolution display, more secure face unlock, rear fingerprint sensor, that sexy red casing. But the G8X streamlines in smart ways, improves on speaker audio and brings a bigger battery to the table. This hardware brings a lot of fun perks. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of wallet cases, cases that cover the screen, but making this hinge a bit more rigid takes care of one of my biggest pet peeves, propping up a phone screen. No more buying kickstand cases with only one, maybe two angles. We now have a little baby laptop clamshell that can line up however you need it to. And I use this a lot in the kitchen, it's going to be great on an airplane. It's just so damn handy. Speaking of handy, it also makes for a good handle. If you're chasing around an active toddler, disable the second screen and you can use it as a grip while you're running around and shooting some video. Nearly every part of this experience has been touched up and refined over the V50 dual screen. And I have a separate video comparing those two screen cases too. Now, the concern I have with these dual screen cases as someone who likes to baby their glass on glass sandwiches, they're really well fit. There's almost no clearance when the case is closed. So if you're someone who likes to use screen protectors, they probably won't work great here. I, I didn't even try on the G8X, but it didn't take long for a glass protector to crack on my LG V50. It prevents the case from fully closing, so it's not surprising this cracked right near the case hinge. The other concern, this extra chin on the G8X. So angled headphone connectors, aren't gonna work. LG delivers a novel solution for charging though, and I love this little magnetic clip. I wish there was a universal pin solution for magnetic USB-C because this has already saved my phone from taking a slide off of a table. The only issue is losing this adapter. While cleaning up in the gadget lab, cleaning off that table, I literally lost it in a pack of gum. Took me days to find it. I had a good face palm of a laugh over on the some gadget guy discord. It was pretty good. Happily, it's not just for charging, this is a data compatible solution when you plug it into a PC. My only serious gripe with the phone hardware, I've never loved in-display fingerprint sensors and this one is not gonna change my mind. It's a bit slow. And after the improvements on OnePlus phones, you can feel that extra touch of lag when you go to unlock it. Now for folks that have watched my previous LG reviews, software is often the weak link of an LG handset. But 2019 was a decent year for LG. Many of their phones caught up to Android Pie. The maintenance updates on the G8 and V50 have been fantastic. Android 10 is rolling out to the Korean phones as we speak. And the G8X is the first phone to use LG's new UI. And it's pretty good. A bit Samsung-y, but good. Everything is a bit rounder and softer. It's a lot of consideration for where your thumb's gonna be pulling some elements down to the bottom of the screen. And there's a more consistent application of panels and rectangles. It's really the most consistent UI LG's ever produced. LG still includes a ton of customization options. Instead of an edge sense panel, there's, there's a little slider. You got some options on there. It's very much in the style of the original V10's ticker display, but the phone can get a bit crowded between the slider and the controls for the dual display. And I think this will be further complicated by gestures on Android 10. Where will it be safe to swipe 
for the back button. I'm still likely to use Nova Launcher on my heavily skinned Android phones. I am a creature of habit. I have the same complaints here that I had with Samsung's UI. It's so friendly and bubbly that it can sometimes get in your way. And these panels and menu options are larger. So even setting the font and the UI to the smallest settings, there's more wasted space. But even for my personal preferences, this is a huge step up over previous LG interfaces. And if you want to get the most out of the dual screen, you really really will want to use the LG experience and the LG keyboard for the best compatibility of services. Only the browser has been tweaked to use both displays as one surface, but that's not really the trick here. With, with the gap between the screens, this is awesome for multitasking and input. I really like playing video on one screen and having a whole extra phone to work on. Flipping the phone sideways to type something in reminds me of those old slider keyboard Windows phones where we get one full screen to work on and a larger dual thumb keyboard to type on. That's nice. The gaming features are just okay. Anything which uses dual analog sticks is gonna be difficult to play. There aren't any triggers, so you can't really move and shoot at the same time with just one thumb. But a lot of other arcade and classic D-pad games are going to play great. I would like to see more tablet views and panels though. Instead of one big surface, full screen file browsing could be interesting with navigation on one side and folders on the other. Documents and spreadsheets could be killer apps. Maybe maps with more detailed navigation or points of interest information on one side in your actual map on the other side. It's like the early days of split screening apps. It's going to take a while for individual services to get folding and dual screen modes. LG is making a solid case for a customized gadget though. I, I know we're all supposed to prefer stock Android, but LG is adding some smart stuff on top. The G8X is on Android 9, but is able to use a lot of Android 10's dark themes in apps. Android 10 brings more screen awareness and the beginnings of a desktop mode, but LG is already awesome offering better monitor connectivity. The G8X will change up aspect ratio on the fly to better match a TV. Regular Android 10 just letterboxes landscape content from a phone. Not to mention the custom software and hardware needed to drive an audiophile grade headphone jack, which is aware of what you plug into it. It's not easy adding this stuff on top of Android. Software has been LG's weak spot for a while, but this year they seem to be turning that around. The G8X, is a fun look at where LG will be headed in 2020. Camera situation is solid. We've got standard and wide shooters. The front camera now shoots 4K video, but this is one of the areas where I think the regular G8 is still a bit better. The G8X uses a smaller aperture on the standard shooter. On these tiny little phone sensors, it's not going to be a dramatic downgrade. The bokeh gets a little busier with the longer depth of field. You might have to hold just a little steadier in lower light conditions. I'm not entirely sure how noticeable the differences will be if you're not shooting on the two phones side by side. The G8X is not going to struggle with the standard point and shoot situations most people will use it for, and it still packs all the great manual controls to push content creation farther than any competing handsets. Well, this is a nice surprise. We actually have 4K video from the front facing camera on an LG phone. It's taken them long enough, but we're finally here. But if you wanted to do your own walk and talk vlog, you, we also want to hear how do the mics perform when you're actually out and about and tractors are driving by and there's environmental noise all around you. So uh, now that I've got a sample of this, we can take it back to the lab, listen to how it sounds, and you'll get a sense of what you can really do from these phones. The one bummer for me, the wide angle on the G8X does not support UHD at 60 frames per second. I really hope that's not a trend for LG moving forward. I don't want LG to copy other manufacturers here. I want all the same capabilities and controls on the wide as I get on that standard sensor. But what good is all of this cool tech if your battery can't hang? It seems LG figured out this year that improved power management and bigger batteries are a good combination. The G8X is now the LG battery champ. As a standalone phone, it slightly outperforms my V50, and as a dual screen device, it's able to run longer than my regular G8. That's a good combination. The recharge game still isn't the fastest, but that's by design. I completely missed this in my V50 review, but LG is employing a more aggressive 
adaptive charging not too dissimilar to what Sony is doing this year. The phone starts to learn your behavior and adjusts recharge rate to keep thermals in check. You can turn it off and get the full range of 18 watt charging, but even with the adaptive charging on, it's still decently quick when you need to top it off. Whew. But that's enough rambling from me. We should probably wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the LG G8? X. This phone rocks. The comments from my LG reviews are often flooded with should ofs. They just copy. LG should have done something original. LG should have charged less for a phone that does more. Some really astute gadget commentary in there. But here comes the G8X. It's got this fun trick that no one else is really competing with right now. And if you grab it early, it arrives at a price in OnePlus territory. So they're going to be all new should ofs for this phone. As I've seen numerous reviews point out the serious flaws here. Now, my favorite so far, how bulky this case is, even though it's thinner than a Galaxy Fold. And the G8X is going to be way more durable than that $2,000 vanity piece. So I expect we'll see a lot of hoop jumping for the G8X. It'll be a mostly positive review, but then some teeth gasping. And then a final conclusion, which makes people who didn't buy an LG feel better that they didn't buy and LG, and then maybe some fond words of encouragement. Maybe not this phone, but there are some good ideas to look out for after they've been refined. <laughs> Better luck next year, LG. When you do all the things we ask you to do, we'll figure out new deal breakers so we can keep recommending more popular devices on YouTube. That's better for our channel metrics. <laughs> Fun dual screens, great performance, great battery life, very good cameras, a memory card slot, and an audiophile headphone jack that outperforms pretty expensive standalone media players, all for $250 less than a Galaxy Note 10 unlocked. But it's still not good enough. You know what? You're right. Let's splurge. Add $100 to the price of the G8X for a 512 gigabyte memory card, and you'll have double the storage of a Note 10, twice as much screen, a bigger battery, all the same camera features, plus true manual controls, the amazing headphone jack, and you'll still save $150. How is that not? a great gadget fight. This whole bash the smaller brand game is getting really tired because it's really obvious. 2019 has been an incredible year for competition, but my YouTube feed right now is cluttered with Galaxy S11 and iPhone 11S rumors. 11s and S's are going to be such a pain in the butt next year. There's so much more going on out there. LG delivered a badass bargain with the G8X. I just hope that people don't miss it. I'll of course leave links below where you can find more info on the G8X, maybe shop one of these puppies online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these reviews, sharing is really important, and subscribing to this channel. More than me just trolling through my channel analytics to only talk about the most popular topics and gadgets, I want us all to start looking at phones more like how we review laptops more competition will always be better. And if you'd like to help support the production of those conversations, the links in the description down below will help, or you could consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. It's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I'm planning future content, and they get exclusive access to my camera and audio deep dive reviews, which for audio, it's really fun to go through the LG reviews. They're good people. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.